Okay, so it turns out it's kind of warm here in the northeast. Um, we're about an hour or so north of Philadelphia. And I uh, was in the car the other day, feeling kind of warm. Uh, so we checked the, the vent temperature on the car. I haven't put the gauges on it yet, but the car is 11 years old. And uh, chances are it's low in Freon. It's never been charged. So I thought, uh, well, I'd really like to pull that system down and recharge it. Um, it uses 134A, which is uh, fairly common. Uh, we do like to recover it, though. So uh, not having a recovery pump and maybe charging a car um, a couple times a decade uh, between my cars. Um, we thought it still would be nice not to vent that to the atmosphere. Although I don't think there's a whole lot left in that car. Um, I think it holds 22 ounces. Um, maybe it's maybe it's got about half that charge on it. Uh, again, we'll know more when we put the gauges on it and see. But I thought in case we do get that far and, and determine it is low, uh, there should be a way to recover it. A few years back, um, I had a coworker of mine saying that he, uh, he had a uh, dehumidifier that, that wasn't uh, dehumidified anymore, freezing up, and then after that it stopped freezing up. So I feel like um, I asked him, hey, put that aside for me, uh, at least the compressor. And uh, he, he was nice enough to do that. However, uh, when he gave it to me, I sure didn't realize that I also needed the capacitor for this. So uh, the internet's a great place. Uh, I was able to take the number off the compressor, um, which I'll, I'll include a still of that, and uh, find, find a wiring schematic for it, which is, uh, which is really kind of nice. Um, so we were, and, and a parts list, we were able to determine it takes a 40 microfarad capacitor. So uh, with the wonder of eBay, and in one day I had a 40 microfarad capacitor. Um, it cost me $9. It's, it's brand new, and while I wouldn't put a no-name capacitor in something to, you know, like my air conditioner for my home, um, or anything else I was going to use for something I'm going to use a couple times, a couple or three times every 10 years, it seemed to, to make a, um, seemed to make, seemed to be a good decision to do that. And I have that capacitor. I'll grab it for you. And again, it might, uh, might actually be a good brand capacitor, I just don't know. Okay, here's that uh, here's that capacitor I got off eBay. Realizing one day, I realize where you live in the country, it might uh, take a little longer than that. But uh, for nine nine something delivered, uh, hard to beat if it works. I did uh, I did open it, and uh, we made sure that this, uh, even though it probably has an internal bleed resistor. I, I did uh, put a screwdriver across that to make sure it was, was okay. I have my official EEV blog meter from uh, David Jones over there on YouTube, and I'll tell you, this is probably the best meter I have ever owned. I've owned, I've owned meters all my life. Um, it's, it's really easy to use. It uh, has everything you want on it, and uh, I especially like this Auto V because I do do a lot of electrical work, and um, I mean not professionally. I do do a lot of electrical work though and it's really nice to have that um, because it'll it'll um, show you when a voltage is really there or not. It puts a little load on the circuit and you really know if you have voltage and it's not just phantom voltage so it's really it's really um, that feature I really like about it. But as far as the capacitor we'll go ahead and check it now and we'll see um, see if it's really close to 40 microfarads or not. Um, I know this isn't the same as loading it in the circuit and trying it but, but at least it'll give us a uh, um, it'll give us an idea whether the capacitance right. I wouldn't expect there to be any resistance in the capacitor yet because it hasn't really been in use. Uh, there might there might be some, but um, for this application, I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, have I used this meter to do capacitance checks before? Um, I feel like I must have. We're going to go ahead and put it on diode and capacitance, and you see it uh, it comes up in capacitance by default. And I don't know if you can you can see this in the, in the light. But it's on the narrow nanofarad scale. It's auto ranging. So I'm going to sit this here. Um, again, I hope you can see. Yeah, I think you can. It's kind of bright out here today. So we're gonna we're gonna see what this reads. It's rated at 40, and it's charging it now. That's pretty good. That's 39.3. So well within. I'm going to reverse it now. Um, should take a little while to drain it and then recharge it. Um, 39.3. 
microfarads and uh, yeah it's 40 plus or minus 5% so I think uh, I think we're well within that um, okay so what we're gonna do then is I'm gonna um, I'm gonna wire this up and we'll just plug it in temporarily just to see if the compressor works um, I will bring you right back as soon as I have that all hooked up uh, one thing we'll do before um, we hook up the capacitor and plug it in uh, um, the gentleman that gave this to me uh, did say it was running but um, if we didn't know that we before we go through all that work um, and just as a general rule we want to check this and make sure the windings in the in the uh, compressor are good and that the overload is actually closed um, normally you disconnect all the wires but as you can see in this in this case we really don't have to do that since they're cut we'll um, take our meter again we'll put it on ohms <clears throat> actually if I can put it on audible diode check so you can hear this let's do that okay all right so now we have our resistance check with sound hopefully you can hear that I'll, I'll tilt it up anyway so maybe you can get a look at that so you can see we get the um, diode check this this right here is the overload protector so when this if this would get too hot this would open and then when it cooled down it would close again um, a lot of units have this today I think a lot of the um, uh, larger units like your home units um, this is built internally so you can't get at it it's actually inside the sealed system but on this one it is replaceable um, but again that typically in, in, in regular service this really should never trip so what we're going to do is first we'll check to make sure that this isn't open because if it's open we won't get the compressor started I don't know if you can see that flashing or hear that tone but that is uh, closed so that that is good um, there's two windings in this there's one that goes through the cap and one that goes directly to um, the hot lead well you know hot lead comes in here um, goes through the overload uh, goes into this winding and then and then uh, would would go from here to here and this would be your neutral wire so that would be one winding the other wire goes through the capacitor so we would uh, check the, the first winding which would be going from our overload either side now because we know this is actually closed and uh, we would go to this to this white terminal if I can get on it without taking it off that would be great I don't think I can or the or that's open but let me get a screwdriver and pop that off or even a pair of uh, channel lock, uh, Knipex, excuse me, channel lock, <laughs> and we'll check this winding and see if this winding is, okay, that winding is uh, continuous, so that winding is, is either good or shorted. Um, the other thing we always want to check is to make sure none of these are shorted to the outside of the case. There's also a, a ground wire down here, which we can check that out. But we'll uh, we'll make sure that that nothing is 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 shorted to this case before we plug it in. Now this winding um, would, would go also to this this, and that is also continuous. So really, what happens is this this overload. Um, feeds both of these windings and then through the capacitor goes to neutral this one winding. Okay so I think what we'll do is we'll um, for, for now we'll strip back some of this wire and we'll just temporarily connect this stuff and uh, we'll plug it in and see what happens. Just hang on a second. Okay, so I've got a line cord here. Uh, of course, when we hook this up permanently, if this all works out, we will um, use a three-wire cord that'll be grounded. Um, but for this purpose, and we know nothing shorted to the case, so we know there shouldn't be any danger here if we happen to come in contact with that. I will check that again after we plug it in. But for now, we'll uh, just go ahead and get this wired up. Got some another great a great eBay find um, FTA Electronics um, these these alligator um, jumpers 
I've been using them for years and they, and they seem to uh, work really well. They hold up. Uh, I believe these are 16 gauge, so they're really nice. And I know it's summertime now, uh, but even in the winter, these these don't have a bad feel to them. They don't feel they don't get real stiff. They're pretty decent silicone um, for what they cost. They were very inexpensive. I forget how much they were, but I think I got I think I got six packs of these for maybe 20 bucks. So what we want to do is strip a couple of these wires here. Now we'll look at our schematic. Hopefully this will focus for you. If not, because I really can't see the screen too well here because it is kind of a sunny day, I will put a still shot of this here and then we'll talk through that uh, when we edit the vid video. Um, but this is what I'll be using to hook it up. Here's the compressor area right here. You have the hot lead, um, uh, which will show you where that comes in at. Uh, going through your overload protector, which is this little device I showed you here. It'll go through the winding. It'll go uh, come out the white wire. Come out the white wire. We'll go to one side of our capacitor. The uh, blue wire, um, it'll also come out on the blue wire, go to the other side of the cap, but uh, it's best not to think about that as actually being going to the capacitor. It's just using the capacitor for a terminal block, basically. So that actually can go right to neutral. Um, the white wire um, goes also is the one that actually is where the current, um, I want to use this frame this, this term loosely is that passes through the capacitor. Um, we know there's no connection there, um, but it's best to think about the AC going through the capacitor, I think. Um, let's, let's get going. So we are gonna, uh, from the schematic, we are gonna take the, the white lead coming out. You can see me here, the white lead. We are gonna hook that to one side of the capacitor. We are going to take the um, blue lead. We are going to hook that to the other side of the capacitor. And this capacitor, if it's on screen, yeah, this capacitor is not electrolytic, which means it doesn't matter which way we hook this up. It's a capacitor. Um, there's no polarity involved in a, in a regular capacitor. When you get into the electrolytics, you have to be very aware of that, but that's more for electronics. Um, Usually, I mean, not usually, but every one I've ever seen, fan motor, um, uh, com compressor, HVAC, um, whether it's start or run, they're always just, just a regular regular capacitor. So now we're going to take that one where we hooked the blue lead to that I said um, was kind of the jumper, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to jumper it, and that's going to go to neutral. Now, on, these, uh, on this particular cord, you'll notice that there is a, a polarized plug. The larger, the larger um, prong is the neutral, the smaller prong is the hot. Um, there's usually, on every cord, there's usually a way to tell that even if you can't see the end. Usually there's a smooth side and a rib side. And this is pretty much on every cord you'll ever see. The rib side is the neutral. Uh, sometimes you'll see dashes on it or slashes on it. Uh, that's typically the neutral. Just another uh, double check. I would always make sure of that anyway, but every one I've ever seen, uh, you can pretty much trust that, that they've wired the, the uh, neutral side. Uh, and they've labeled the neutral side. So we're going to hook that to the neutral. Now this, this red one is going to go to the, to the hot wire. So we will hook this to the hot wire. And we're going to hang that right there to make sure that it's it's out of the way. It's not going to touch anything. Our neutral is also clear. Let me let me hook that up there also so you can see it. And we got everything out of the way. Our capacitor's wired. We'll double check all our wiring. Okay, I wanted to clean this up just a little bit for you. This uh, capacitor is kind of light, so this, these wires are kind of pulling it over. Um, but we want to recheck this wiring, right? So the hot wire, um, which is this one, you go make sure that goes to your um, hot wire on your on your line cord. Make sure the neutral wire from your line cord goes to your capacitor, and that is also used as a terminal block. And that continues on to the blue wire of your compressor. Um, the other side of the capacitor goes to the white wire of the compressor. And we'll put the schematic back up there and 
and hopefully that all makes sense. So now we're right at the point where we want to plug it in and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to grab an extension cord and I'll be right back. Okay. So we're going to try to straighten this up just a little bit so it's not leaning so much. And we'll make sure, I did say we were going to make sure nothing was grounded. So how we do that is we take our meter and we make sure that we get tone. I'm going to make sure that from the hot lead, um, I guess that's low enough to tone it off. You probably cannot see that. We're actually reading the um, resistance in the windings, which is uh, about two two ohms, which makes which makes sense. What we want to make sure is we're not we don't have any um, resistance at all. It should be infinite to ground. So here, here, uh, so we don't have a short. So when we plug it in, we'll see if this runs. And there it goes. I don't know if you can hear it running, but it is definitely running. Um, this is, system probably is empty. So uh, I'm not getting any temperature off of it yet. Maybe just a little bit in the evaporator. So we will need to recover this system first. Um, but this does work. The, the next thing I'd like to do really is put a set of gauges on it and see if there's actually any any liquid in here or any, any Freon at all in here because I'm just feeling a little bit of temperature difference here between the two coils. And we'll be right back. Okay, I don't have a tap valve. Um, so I won't be able to put the gauge set on here. Uh, there's another way we can do this though. We can, uh, we can check the amper on this unit. Um, I found a lock rotor amperage of 37. I got a, I think this this unit would probably draw, uh, given the size of it, maybe five or six amps when it's running, maybe a little less. If it's empty, it probably won't draw half an amp. Um, so that'll give us an idea of how much charge is in it, or if there's any any charge at all. We're going to take our positive wire. I'm um, positive our hot line and we are going to run that through the amp clamp we're just using this tube to keep it from falling over so we'll run this through our amp clamp to our winding well you can see that I just want to check and make sure since we've disturbed everything that everything looks good everything looks clear I'm going to go ahead and plug it in and we are reading no, it was about right. Five amps. Um, I don't know if I can move this. Catch it around our neutral. It's always possible this, this meter is not correct, but um, let me clip it on the neutral and see what I'm reading. I know you guys can't see this. Yeah, 5.5. Um, that's about right. Um, these, these units, this is probably a 60 or 70 pint unit and um, you know 70 pints per day it removes um, theoretically from the air um, and the size compressor you need to do that much work is is usually about five amps um, it actually might go down once it's uh, once it um, stabilizes without a fan here though we're gonna we're gonna probably see that that go up it's right down to three amps but um, we'll get back to you as soon as we get this thing evacuated cut off we'll put a couple taps on it and uh, we'll go from there all right